Vikings began to settle in Scotland and started to mix with the people who lived here. How did they get on? What jobs did they do? Were they good neighbors? Let's find out. Remember last time we found out the Vikings came to Scotland to raid? They stole from the monasteries and they kidnapped people to use as slaves. Well, after a while, they began to settle in Scotland. I wonder what kind of neighbours they would have made. I'm visiting a Viking village in Largs. A group of people stay here for one week, living their lives as they think the Vikings would have done when they settled in Scotland. So what's the first thing you need when you go to live in a new place? That's right, a place to live. A roof over your head. Well, Viking houses were called long houses, and some of them were long enough to house their animals. Although many long houses were made of wood, some were made of stone, earth, and turf, as these materials were better at keeping out the cold. The Vikings were clever, because they made good use of anything that was nearby. A fantastic opportunity to buy a desirable longhouse in traditional Viking style. Cozy room at one end for all the family to share. No windows. But lamps are provided for lighting the longhouse. And to keep you warm at night, animals sleep here too. Animals. Doesn't sound too desirable to me. I wonder what it was like to live in a Viking longhouse. In the centre of the house was an open fire, which was used for cooking. It was probably very smoky because there were no chimneys. Smoke found its way out either through the doorway or through the roof. There were probably no windows to open, so there was no natural light. Instead, they had to use hanging lamps, which were made from stone, using wick and oil to provide light. Benches and beds lined the walls. Some houses even had cushions and wall hangings. Heather was collected and dried to use as soft bedding. Skins from animals and woolen rugs were used to make the houses warmer and more comfortable. A loom used for weaving cloth took up a lot of room. Female Vikings learned how to spin and weave to make clothes. Remember, quite a lot of things were homemade. In the cold winters, the animals usually slept inside the house at the far end. So now we know where the Vikings lived. But what about food? What did they eat? So what's for tea, Rachel? Stew. Stew. Is that a typical Viking meal? Yes, it is. Uh, Vikings would actually grow different types of fruits and vegetables. They had things like leeks and onions. They also had carrots, but back then they were actually white or purple. They also had different types of fruit as well, such as blueberries and strawberries and apples. They also ate different types of animals, and they would not only eat the animals, but they'd also use the milk from goats and cattle to make cheese and butter. Did they eat anything else? Living by the sea, they would eat a lot of fish. How do you know all this? Archaeologists would go through the ruins of Viking huts, and they'd go through the rubbish. What did the Vikings use to cook on? They would use different types of soapstone. They'd also use different types of wooden bowls, as you see a variety here. They'd also use different types of cauldrons. What's this? This here is called a quern. What they would do is take different types of oats and grain and place it in this hole here. They would then grind this around. As you can see on top, there's a lattice pattern. This lattice pattern is also in between these two stones. The oats would then fall in through here to make flour, which they would then use to make bread. And what's this? Because it looks like a fruit pizza. 
Pretty close. It's an oat cake with jam and different types of fruit. And is it for me? Sure. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't too bad after all. As they lived by the sea, there was plenty of fish. They could make their own bread. They kept cattle for meat and dairy products like milk and cheese. Chickens gave them eggs. And they could pick berries and other fruits. And also vegetables that were grown locally. So, no excuses. They could still have five portions of fruit and veg a day. So what did the Vikings wear? Well, the first thing to remember is that quite a lot of things would have been homemade. And also, they would have had to use materials that were around at the time. Like wool, which was itchy, but it kept them warm. And that was important. Also, they had linen and leather. And sometimes they even had silk, which was brought from abroad when the Vikings traded. This is what we think the Vikings might have worn. Ingrid is wearing an underdress, and on top of that, a silk dress. This is decorated with some fine Viking jewellery. This Viking is quite rich. She is wearing a fur to keep her warm. Not everyone would have had the beautifully crafted jewellery, and their clothes would have been a lot plainer. An outfit like this might have been worn by quite a rich Viking who had travelled, but whose clothes were also very practical. Today, I am wearing leggings for warmth under my fetching tunic. A heavy woolen cloak would be essential for the cold winters. The cloak is pinned together with a brooch, but making sure that the sword is always easy to reach should you need to get to it in a hurry. Some Vikings would wear a lot of expensive jewellery to show how rich and powerful they were. So not so different from today. People nowadays like to wear big diamond rings or expensive-looking jewellery. Everyone from, like, the Queen to hip-hop rappers likes to wear their bling. In it. So how do we know all this? Well, some Viking objects have been discovered by archaeologists. What's an archaeologist? Let's go find out. This is the Museum of Scotland in Edinburgh, where, amongst many other things, you can see real Viking objects which have been found by archaeologists. So let's go in and meet an archaeologist. Andy, you're an archaeologist, so what does your job involve? What do you do? An archaeologist is generally interested in finding about the past. Um, and whereas historians have things like texts and books to help them, archaeologists, by and large, don't. Um, so we have other things um, that we dig out the ground, things underneath the ground like settlements or houses or objects. And as I'm an archaeologist who works in the museum, I spend most of my time looking at um, objects, um, like we've got on the table here. How reliable is archaeologist evidence? It depends what kind of archaeological object you actually find. And if we can take two examples. This is obviously a sword. Um, most people recognise it as a sword, um, whereas this object is very confusing. It's just a piece of bone with holes in it. And you'd probably be surprised that um, it's a gaming board for like playing games. And the reason we know that is that other similar objects have been found on other archaeological sites. Most people's image of a Viking is with a sword or a weapon. Have you found any other weapons? We have these two objects here. The thing you have to remember is that not all of the, the objects survives. Quite a lot of um, objects are made of wood, which obviously rots away. So, for example, this is actually um, an axe. Uh, it doesn't look very ferocious now, but there would have been a big handle here um, attached, so you can imagine me attacking you with this big axe. Um, you might want to defend yourself by using a shield. This is actually the centre of a shield. It's called the shield 